So thanks for joining the thing, everyone. Um, our 12th town hall. Um, so our agenda today is um, to cover workgroup progress. Um, and then we have a presentation, um, a proposal for a community initiative from uh, Architect of Neurowork. Um, and then we do an update on tasks and rewards. And then at the end, just open topics for any open discussion we want to have. Uh, okay, so on to the next slide, please. So at the moment, um, the work groups that we have are the community podcast, um, which is being headed up by Julian, um, who's on vacation. Um, so things are kind of semi-paused on the community podcast front at the moment. Um, so we're not currently running the Monday and Friday workgroup sessions um, until Julian returns. Um, I think he's back on the 6th of August, so probably we'll resume the community podcast work groups on Monday the 8th, and um, that'll be 11am UTC um, on Monday. Um, I think things are going well with the community podcast. Um, Julian has been I uh, started interviewing people, uh, we're uh, building up some interviews so that we can officially launch the podcast soon. Uh, so yeah, um, also everyone um, is welcome to join in with the podcast efforts if anyone has an interest in the community to help out uh, with the podcast, you're very welcome to. Uh, probably best place to start would be just to um, check out the Discord, say hi, and yeah, we can take it from there. Um, the other work group that we have is what we're calling now the Process Guild, which is um, basically getting the Ambassador Programme set up and established and establishing all of the processes and structures for the program, um, which is uh, very much uh, essential work as we kind of um, get the program established in these first few months. Um, we don't currently have any scheduled uh, work group meetings uh, for that work group. Uh, we might start doing that again, but at the moment it's kind of work is being done kind of on an ad hoc basis and um, I know Tivo is doing yeah doing some I, work on that. I could add to that. So so the I think on Sunday or Friday I was like, okay, I'm gonna do something and that was more of like a spontaneous work. So I shared it in the Discord uh, chat so when you are in discord you can check in number on Batador channel if uh, anything is happening and i think over time we can schedule a more precise timing i thought maybe i share my screen a bit because just just to show what i did and what we could look towards to discuss later so sure. so started the screen sharing and that's a Marabord. This is the same uh, meeting notes Marabord, which is will be also linked to this YouTube channel or short to description. Few a backstory a few months ago uh, there was a bit the bigger working group of, from different networks, people going together and establishing what they are and, and providing what they like do with the work, how they use it, what do they use it for. And from that uh, first like uh, data points created a framework of a kind where it could like very good kind of try to test the process like is it good or not so we basically categorized into three different sections setting up an infrastructure so like how to set up the tasks and make sure that people know where is happening coordination management so when when people can meet to do, do the stuff together 
and task management of like how the task itself is moved around. So here I took the like very specific case of uh, translation tasks. So the ones we put like a blog and then we want different uh, translations for that. And then later we want to verify it and until to the payment. So setting up the infrastructure, I, I already kind of noticed that uh, there are resources in the task, there are guides how to kind of do it. There are missing templates like how to upload or, so, or sometimes there are questions like how, how to improve or how to share the translation. And coordination is uh, also a bit of a uh, missing as there's no uh, like direct line to people to kind of do this uh, all the tasks very like fluidly. Uh, however, coordination management on like where are the tasks, how to find them, this is pretty well done as most of it is shared in these town hall meetings. Every every week there is like, hey, there are new updates here, you can check it. So if you look into like Discord, you will see the task order. And another way is sometimes when people join in working groups or share in Discord working channels, then it also leads to, hey, new updates, new, new, new tasks to pick up. So that is quite well circulated, I would say so. Um, but if you go into task management itself, based on this framework, we can see that Peter has so many like activities, what he has to do. So it's uh, a bit also slow and maybe in future we can talk about how could we like elaborate the process that it's more like from left to right and down instead of going back all the time to the creator of the task. So instead the task itself kind of is self-explanatory and leads to finish line and getting, getting it easily processed. So this is what I worked on and if there are people who are interested on taking some kind of task in the Singularity Net or community podcast and want to kind of refine how to get it from start to finish, we could map it perhaps to this framework and slowly collect like a data bank of what works, what doesn't, and then in these kinds of discussions, working sessions, we can also elaborate how could we improve it better or how could we like make it more sustainable. Thanks very much for that. Um, yeah, I think that'll be really important to um, have good pipelines and processes there, especially as the number of people involved and tasks increase. It's going to be important to have a slick process in place. Uh, I feel like it helps with onboarding and if we can make it like a collaborative effort that everybody who's interested in these kinds of workings and system thinking then can all find out share their knowledge and spread their time and effort in, into like creating a collective standards and solutions and so yeah. Yeah, so um, anyone out there who's interested in processes and systems thinking, please do get in touch. We'd be very grateful for your assistance and uh, yeah. So um, shall we go back to the slides? Thanks very much, Felix. Um, okay, I think that pretty much covers the work groups for now. Um, so we can probably go on to the next, the next slide. Um, I think we were going to actually we were going to do Architect and NeuroWorks presentation now. Um, so what's the next thing on our agenda? So actually. Um, yeah, we will hand over to our architect who's kindly um, offered to give us a presentation on a um, proposal he has for the community initiative. So I will hand over to architect. Great. Uh, thank you, Ian. Uh, let's see if I can if I can share. 
we have practiced before. I hope it will be possible to do it. And I want to see anything? Yeah, you can see that. Community operator research. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and and uh, I want to bring this up because um, I just want to know if this is a good uh, project to cover in the ambassador program. So I'm gonna run this through and uh, it's gonna be eight-ish slides so I'm gonna be quite uh, concise here uh, yeah so I'm gonna talk about a community way of research uh, and another is a research topic of biomimicry and establish research center so well, this started out a short background here. It actually, I don't know how many that is aware of, but the MindPlex, the centralized media platform, was calling out for contribution to their platform, of course. And I issued, a, well, I proposed an article that was named the Community Research Paper Biomimicry, Episode Zero. It was more like a statement. Uh, about what to, what we can do with uh, uh, w when a community can get together and uh, kind of research together. Uh, so that's the the way my mind came into paper. Uh, so that's a short background uh, of what happened uh, to lead to this. So okay community way of researching uh, so this is a quite a, a, a general oversight here so but just thinking what, what, what can a community member do for a research a community operated research well obvious all informational experience is valuable and of course professional knowledge as well and uh, it can be a functional contribution that members can do like reviewing data and, and uh, of course, coordination efforts, as in every uh, project, uh, of course. So, a little bit more in detail. So, my suggestion or thoughts, of course, more, uh, is like uh, we, we can split this uh, research tasks in, uh, you know, um, community can have uh, two roles. I call one here researcher, or it could be writer. We'll call it anything else that could be anyone in the community and can contribute any time and that could be just context textual content and it can of course be just doing a, a minor uh, effort like just seeking up references from science article or other sources and uh, proposed research topics is also uh, appreciate if uh, m members can do an improvement on the research process which i will be talking about a little bit more later uh, another role can be the curator that oversees this work and uh, the curator role there can be of course can be several of the community members that have this role curator and it could be a rotating role as well but the creator do uh, well overseas information as said that could be like fact checking okay logging access information and the uh, responsible edit and distribution of uh, the findings the research findings and uh, act as a kind of lending the input to research process and uh, the second segment of the presentation is kind of focused on uh, uh, how well how to design a community by be inspired by nature. That's what it called biomimicry. So, how to design our future community for the best communication, coordination, governance, project structures, economy structure, etc. Uh, so that uh, goes to the third part of this presentation which is kind of um, uh, 
the work, uh, the, what I have said before in uh, section one and two, it kind of, if we can grab that and make a foundation, uh, establish uh, uh, a sustainable way of working, we can actually establish a community research center. I call it just community research center uh, because it's kind of, well, self-explanatory. And uh, what are this community research center doing? So, of course, develop a research process that uh, the members can use. And uh, of course, responsibility for the community research center is also populate with available expertise, can be inside or outside the community. Uh, it's always uh, valuable with the good uh, knowledge and expertise, of course. And the research center also will have a responsibility to populate with key commitment members, of course, uh, that they are involved, engaged in this. It's important. Uh, also fundraising and uh, perhaps also find information, sources and resources. Uh, yes, so it comes to the end. Uh, is this something like this? Uh, could that be a part of the ambassador program? And I can see two distinct uh, parts, two projects maybe, and that is uh, doing this uh, community design via bio biomimicry to develop a, uh, yeah, the community and the way of working. And the, and the other project will be the community established, a community research center. And uh, well, I just put some uh, final words that are interested in joining. So I'm architect of NeuroWork, and if you're interested in to develop this and uh, going forward, uh, please DM me, headline community research. Uh, I guess that's it, a little bit short, but uh, I guess it is kind of clear what I'm trying to say. And Half of this community already is designing how to community coordinate Kavel and <laughs> make, put it into a structure. Uh, so I think it's encapsulating yes. something we already do and puts like a, maybe a data location or a more more of a node into what we do. Uh, but um, when I look at the community, like establish who will go practice for community issues. So yeah, if I look at the practice list, then we might need some extra uh, coordination between all of the material people create. And I, there is this thing that how many people we could gather to help to do this and kind of provide alternative um, visions and, and expertise. And so that, that, that is the risk I see right now. Good stuff. Uh, okay, so the new part here would be maybe that creating and establish a process uh, maybe like a, well, pro yeah, a, a kind of a hard a team or hard that, that uh, kind of is focused on developing a process and uh, doing the community design by biomimicry it's maybe that two perspective that is somewhat new in this maybe i just throwing out my thoughts here and we can comment there is a new work <laughs> but, uh, yeah i'm wondering maybe 
this is um, uh, because you added the communication as the first uh, design process. Um, the po community podcast is emerging here, and perhaps if we could scale the podcast community to maybe great start with like uh, interviews or with the people who are taking the role of researchers and describing their thinking and and interest area, how they would find out, tackle the question of how do you design X and then this establish like, establishes like the communication of who are you working with, who are the people you do research together with. The more people join, that's, that's like, the next step would be yeah, coordination, like how all these research is gonna work together. I think some work already started in Catalyst also, where we could learn where IOG and community members are reading white papers and, and actually trying to write a new one. So, so I, is this something going to happen in SingularityNet too? Then, then I would be, I think it would be great. Considering the last uh, single internet video we see the, where like a lot of spin-offs talked about there one person I already forgot which which part of he was but he also said that I'm helping AI with this project this project and this project but their but their idea is to create like general AI or something so it already shows that there are needed these cross cross researchers before between different teams and uh, practices. Uh, Felix, uh, you are involved in uh, is, well this kind of work uh, a little bit uh, more than maybe everyone else. <laughs> Any words or reflection from your side? I got it because it creates already a first structure and the first process. I think it's awesome. <laughs> It's great that you put that much uh, time and thoughts on it already to set it up. One thing where I see a huge overlap is a little bit where you start already to define, let's say, categories. What we have in the Catalyst Cardano community also running since a while. But what happened over the time is that uh, there's one project, I drop a link here in the Discord live chat. This is to some thoughts on how to map a community and contributors and participants into specific areas. But maybe there you, you could find some really nice inspiration as well. It's mostly this one is related to Catalyst funding categories, but it means a, a general speaks about categories or let's say, to define a certain structure for, for those kinds of communities. Okay, great, thanks. economic structures I know where do we get that information <laughs> so far it's, uh, it's a lot of data to gather but we're building it as we go in one year we all look back at the first rewards given up by to the ambassadors, program members, and working groups. And then we see a pattern, and we're like, "Oh, economic structure. Let's let's try to scale <laughs> or something." I 
What well, I mean, question architect could you could you share your presentation? Can you hear us, architect? Yeah, I hear you. I'm try, <laughs> try to um, try to um, find it in a momento. In a momento. Um. Yeah, no worries. You don't have to uh, do it just now. No rush. Yeah, I think it's really interesting thinking about ideas around. Uh, yeah learning from nature about how we can build kind of self-sustaining, self-organizing structures. It's interesting stuff. Um, yeah, thanks very much for the presentation, Architect. That was good. So, um, are there any... Question? Oh, sure thing, Felix. Go ahead. Uh, architect, would, would you mind maybe to prepare something, maybe like a workshop or a, a session to call, to tell them more about biometric? biometric? Yeah, maybe a good idea. Because I think it's a really interesting topic. I didn't hear so that much about it before. But I think there might be some real beauty of it, so if you could give us all a little bit more deep dive and background of what does it mean, what does it, does it apply, and how does it function, the mythology, would be amazing. I can do that. Uh, when I've been deep dived to the topic uh, a little bit more, yeah, I, I can get back on that, uh, absolutely. Yeah, I think that would be a great uh, next step to uh, move this forward. I think that, that would be good. Nice. Uh, thanks for the input, uh, guys. Uh, do you uh, want to see the presentation or should we take it afterward? Or what? what is you guys want? Um, I think we can post the... Uh presentation in the ambassador and chat and but you can close the stream I guess. I already took some pictures of that and put them in the meeting notes. Okay. Uh, I, I try to uh, append it in the in in the channels. In the channel. I can do it afterwards here so Stuff. Thanks. Um, yeah, so unless anyone has any more questions for Architect just now, I guess we can uh, move on with the meeting. Uh, so. Next up was translation tasks. Yeah, um, if someone wouldn't mind sharing the Slides again. Yeah, so um, just by way of an update on tasks, um, I've gone through um, tasks that had um, submissions. Um, so I have created a bunch of verification tasks for um, translation tasks that were completed. So uh, please, um, if anyone is able to um, or would like to do any of those verification tasks, that would be much appreciated. There several outstanding tasks at the moment. Um, um, yeah, the way we're working it is that after each um, blog or article 
whatever it is is translated, we have another community member verify the translation. So um, yeah, um, it would be good to get these verification tasks done so that we can share these translations with the community. Um, does anyone I was going to ask, um, I'm not sure if folks here have done translations and verifications, but does anyone have a sense of, in terms of the workload, do you think we have the balance right in terms of uh, tokens um, on the translation side versus the verification side? Um, at the moment, it's quite heavily weighted to a lot more tokens for doing the initial translation. Um, we've set that 750 AGIX at the moment, and the verification tax are 108. Um, but I don't know if there might be um, uh, there might be scope to rebalance that if people think it's it's needed. Does anyone have any thoughts on that or? I have no clue, but uh, whenever you drop in or in the Discord channels, you can also voice your opinion. I think this kind of discussion is good for also for the process quit. Like all these tasks and things are done in order to move from task to start to finish. What? Yeah, I'm just thinking, just because I'm seeing quite a lot of verification tasks still to be done, I'm wondering, you know, there's probably quite a bit of effort required to verify a translation, a translated blog, especially the longer ones, so maybe we need to do a bit of rebalancing between the, the initial translation and the verification work. Um, but yeah, we can continue that discussion in the Discord. Um, ambassador program channel as well. After the translation, somebody copies over to the from the singularity net to the actual blog and then translates the version, or these Google sheets are shared from the original version. Um, yeah, so the process is that the um, translation is shared in a Google document. Whoever is verifying it can look it over and add their comments. Um, and then once it's been verified, um, either Peter or myself copy the translation um, into the forum post and then we attach a link to the uh, forum post translation in the original blog so that anyone who's looking at the original blog can see, ah, there's a, a Spanish version or a Chinese version of this blog and they can click through to the translation. All the verifiers, everybody who has translated, find somebody in your local country who also speaks uh, your language and get them interested. Um, working in pair will, it will work in this case, and over time, uh, overlapping teams kind of can create the reputation of who translates well, who, and who doesn't. Hopefully everybody who has seen or joined has for now seems to have done a good enough work for sharing this information. I think um, in terms of the kind of pipeline, the kind of the faster that we can get the translations out so that it's kind of as current as possible, I think the better so that if we, if we kind of aim to 
have. Um, say if we're talking about the ecosystem monthly blogs, if we can get the translation of the blog out before the next monthly blog comes out, that kind of makes sense. So it's kind of the most current because uh, it probably doesn't um, kind of the, the older the translated content is um, obviously the less um, kind of up to date it is and the less value it's going to be giving so um, yeah it's probably um, something that we can look at um, as part of kind of considering the um, translation tasks pipeline. It's a great way to learn about Singularity Net. So, yeah, me, absolutely. Yeah. Um, so that's the translation tasks. Um, on the the other side, um, kind of all the non-translation tasks. Um, we don't have too many of those at the moment. Uh, the one that's currently available to anyone who would like to give it a try is um, to make a, a summary video of the latest ecosystem leaders meeting, um, which is on YouTube. That's uh, it's like a two-hour meeting, so it's quite a, quite sub a substantial watch. So. Um, have a task to uh, create a, a kind of summary video which can be anything between five minutes to uh, around about 15 minutes long uh, and uh, Julian has already created a couple of videos uh, for um, a couple of the last leaders meetings um, and he um, approached it by way of kind of just um, talking through a summary which is one way of doing it but um, you're also welcome to approach it in a different way if you um, would like to for example edit the, the video and kind of edit together clips of what you think are the most interesting or important pieces of the video um, to kind of edit together into a, a shorter summary video that would be another way of, of doing it so um, yeah if you're interested um, that uh, task is also on, on D work so you can uh, you can uh, apply for that if you're interested and if you don't have the the link to dwork, um, it's on the last slide, so we'll we'll share that at the end. Um, yeah, and also on kind of thinking about other tasks as well. Um, it would be great, I think, if we kind of collate our ideas together somewhere so that we're capturing those because um, we've kind of started floating around ideas of what other tasks ambassadors could be doing um, but we haven't really started collating those ideas and working on them yet so that's maybe something we could do if anyone's interested in uh, getting involved with that um, or, uh, or if you have any um, any ideas for any any other tasks that you think uh, people could be doing? That would be very welcome. I can think of something new. If we still need the, <laughs> I feel like we still need the people who kind of capture action from meetings and from notes and turn it into the work tasks. So everything else is, of course, 
somebody know to already does something and from white value i think they should come up and present themselves and bring these ideas in here uh, but yeah from my side i'm still looking uh, active project manager uh, who kind of helps to establish these community ideas and projects what already people feel like we should do next stuff yeah um, yeah that would definitely be useful um, uh, yeah and we can again we can continue conversations in, uh, in the discord ambassador channel um, yeah so I think we can uh, leave tasks for now unless anyone has any other comments or questions around tasks? No, nope. okay. Really. No worries, okay. Um, so. Yeah, I think that. Um, Kind of brings to our end to an end uh, what we had on the agenda. So it's just um, some time now for uh, an open round of any questions, ideas, thoughts. Um, on the uh, program in general, uh, please feel free to. Uh, talk about anything you would like or bring bring up any ideas you've had or any thoughts it's just great to be back and uh, that's why I also like straight to the Mario board and working on stuff vacations are great but doing stuff mm -hmm. and uh, getting something ready is even even better after the vacation Yeah, it's um, I guess it's the time of year for uh, folks to be to be uh, taking vacations, and uh, yeah, it kind of makes it generally a bit of a quieter time. But uh, yeah, definitely good to be um, kind of keeping things going, and uh, yeah, moving forward, uh, maybe at a bit slower pace through the summer months, but yeah, keeping moving forward nonetheless. Um, I think another thing definitely be keen to do is to uh, continue to find ways to um, have the Singularity Net and Cardano communities um, come together and work together and if we can find ways to to help with that in the ambassador program, I think that would be great. Um, and uh, yeah, I don't know if you have any more ideas on that, Felix, or yes, indeed. So uh, we started a while ago with Swarm to timestamp uh, singularity net tower recordings. To first figure out already ah, how is the interest actually just to go to go in contact with singularity from Kanana side which went all, almost pretty well now we started new experiments as well for example where we want also once again just identify already which kind of people are already in interested in Cardano and singularity singularity net at the same time so to identify those community members so we set up a new kind of bounties now for example to write an article about cross-chain collaboration where we invite people to write articles about ah, what are the advantages, the purposes, the visions of, let's say, Cardano, Singularity Net, and Cardano. So, hoping to get some more, more contributors there than maybe from the Cardano side. Then we wrote out the first uh, 
Privat model now, where we support uh, Singularity and community members from Catalyst from the Cardano side. So Julian right now with 1000 US dollars in ADA per month. And then we said that we want to allocate the most resources from the Swarm pool rewards for the next three months for the Singularity community and ambassador program and everything. And there we will swap like as we discussed last week as well, we uh, will swap directly already pool rewards from the swamp pool into HIX and really focus this heavily on Cardano and Singularity net bounties then and to incentivize people by rewarded bounties in ADA and HIX like we do already. And so, by so introducing the people to Singularity net also by distributing the HIX token to them. Stuff. Thanks very much. Yeah, it's um, uh, be good to uh, see those links and relationships develop. So, yeah. Um, any other thoughts from anyone? Last five minutes of the meeting. just added the links to relevant pages. <clears throat> Excuse me, if anyone wants to find out more about the Ambassador program, these are the best places to, to start. Um, we have our uh, Gitbook account, which is kind of the one-stop shop for our, all of our documentation related to the Ambassador program, and that's the probably the best place to start to find out all about it. Um, and also there's the link to the uh, DWORK page for the Ambassador program, which is where we are listing all of the Ambassador tasks. So that's um, where you can view all of the tasks that are avail available to do and uh, apply for any that uh, that look interesting to you. Um, so yeah, uh, the next uh, Ambassador Program Town Hall will be same time next week, um, the usual time, 1800 UTC. Um, and yeah, hope to uh, hope to see as many folk there as possible. And in the meantime, um, if you want to get involved, just uh, pop into the Discord in the Star Program chat and say hi and introduce yourself. And I'm um, sure there'll be uh, folk around who can uh, answer any questions that you. Point you in the right direction. Um, yeah, so uh, thanks everyone for joining today. 